Hi everyone. I thought just like we have this situation where we have <clears throat> to get essential commodities, you always think of rice, dal, oil, which are a must for every family. There are some compounds which are essential for every every industry that's needed that needs it. And there are four such compounds. First one is hydrogen chloride. The second is ammonia. The third one is sulfuric acid. The fourth one is nitric acid. These are the four compounds. Just like we have the essential things that we want to get, even when your mother goes, the essential things that she wants to pick up is some onions, some tomatoes, some green chilies and potatoes. These are four compounds that are used everywhere and that is why we are here to learn about the four compounds. And today we are going to, in our first session, we are going to do something about hydrogen chloride. Okay. Now you would ask me, what does this mean? Because you would have known this as hydrochloric acid. And here am I saying it as hydrogen chloride gas. Now you should know the difference that you can call it as hydrogen chloride. Or you call it as hydrochloric acid. The difference being when it is in the gaseous state. So you would say HCl in the gaseous state is called hydrogen chloride and when water is added to it and becomes a liquid it is called hydrochloric acid. So that's the basic difference between hydrogen chloride gas and hydrochloric acid but both the things names denote the same formula HCl. Are you clear now? Okay, now let's go on to the laboratory preparation of hydrogen chloride gas. This preparation goes by the rule salt 1 plus less volatile acid gives salt Two plus a volatile acid. What do you mean by the word volatile? Volatile means something that will evaporate very fast. Okay, here because we are preparing hydrogen chloride, the salt should be a chloride, meaning it could be sodium chloride or potassium chloride. Preferably sodium chloride we use for the laboratory preparation and a less volatile acid among the acids that we are familiar with we have nitric acid, we have sulfuric acid. Among the two sulfuric acid is the less volatile acid. So we can use sodium chloride as the salt which reacts with concentrated sulfuric acid which is a less volatile acid to give sodium bisulfate which is salt 2 plus hydrogen chloride. So this is the actual reaction that happens in the laboratory method to give us hydrogen chloride. Okay. Now this can involve some heat that is used and the temperature that we have is less than 200 degrees Celsius. Okay. Now let's go on topic wise or subtitles rather. The first one is the reactants used. The 
reactants used. The first thing the reactant prefer is sodium chloride. And why is it preferred? Because this is the origin of sodium chloride is seawater and seawater is found everywhere. So you get this very cheap and it's also easily available. That is why sodium chloride is preferred. Okay. The next reactant that we actually add on is concentrated sulfuric acid. Concentrated sulfuric acid. Why do we use this? As we saw earlier, only a less volatile acid can displace a volatile acid from its salt. That is why we are using concentrated sulfuric acid. So you would ask me, why can't we use nitric acid? No, because nitric acid is not used. Why? Because it's volatile. Simply because it is volatile. What will happen? Nitric acid is volatile. Hydrogen chloride is volatile. Both of them would evaporate and we would not get hydrogen chloride at all. So we don't use nitric acid but we prefer this because it is less volatile. So that's the reason. Okay. Now the next thing that we need to go on is to see the temperature that is preferred. The next point that we look into is the temperature. We need to know. See, usually when we bake a cake, we need to know the temperature. Otherwise, your cake would become a stone or a rock. Okay, so we need to know the temperature that's preferred. Now here, there are two temperatures which can give two different things. So we definitely need to know what is the temperature that we need to opt here. The temperature that we need is less than 200 degrees. Less than 200 degrees Celsius. Why? Because when the temperature is less than 200, this is the reaction that's happening. Okay? So you get sodium bisulfate and hydrogen chloride. Now you would ask me, what happens? Why shouldn't we in increase the temperature? So if the temperature becomes more than 200, then it is it can cost so many things. Simply, when the temperature is lesser, the fuel required is lesser. So when the temperature is more, the fuel is also more. So you're wasting. Now when we are into cost cutting and other things, if you are going into higher temperature, we are definitely wasting a lot of fuel. So the first one is wastage of fuel. Okay. So the second reason being the apparatus is made of glass and it could damage or break the apparatus. So the apparatus can be damaged, damages the apparatus. Okay. The third most important thing that happens is there is a totally different product that is formed here. What happens when sodium chloride reacts with concentrated sulfuric acid at a higher temperature which is above 200 degrees then instead of forming sodium bisulfate it forms sodium sulfate and hydrogen chloride gas. Okay, there are two sodium atoms, so we put two here and then there is two, there are two compounds of hydrogen chloride. What if this is formed? That would be your question. The problem is with sodium sulfate, 
or even if we use potassium chloride, you would be getting potassium sulfate. Both these things will form a solid hard crust. Okay, a hard crust is formed. See, when you boil water or in the geyser, when you use hard water, after some time, you would, there will be a deposit of white minerals at the bottom. You know the reasons for hard water, all the sulfates and other things will just deposit here. So these sulfates would automatically deposit at the bottom. Then this reaction does not come to completion at all. It upsets because it's a hard crust. It doesn't go away. So the reaction does not come to completion. So these are the three reasons why we prefer less than 200 and if it is more than 200, fuel is wasted, the apparatus is damaged and also a hard crust which is difficult to form that is sodium sulphate or potassium sulphate is formed. So that's why the temperature preferred is less than 200 degrees Celsius. The next factor is we need to know the precautions taken. Now what do we do? We don't go out without a mask, right? That's, the, that's mandatory. Just like that, for this, there are two precautions that we need to take. The first one precaution that we need to take is the heating should be very slow. No, it should not all of a sudden, it should not just blow up, but initially it should be heated very slow. Slow heating. Because as you heat slowly, the evolution would be uniform. Okay? Just to make sure that there is uniform evolution of gas, we heat it very slowly. Then, the second precaution that we need to take is that the tip of this funnel should be immersed in the acid. What will happen if it is not immersed, supposing it's not immersed, supposing it's here. Then, hydrogen chloride gas that is evolved would start going this way and it will go out which is not correct. Okay, so we need to take care that doesn't happen. That's why it should be immersed. So the tip of the funnel should be immersed in the acid. These are the two precautions that we need to take. Alright, so we have seen the reactants, we have seen the temperature and we have seen the precautions that we need to take. Now let's move on to the next step. What's happening here? The purification. This hydrogen chloride is, has a great affinity for water. So water has to be removed, traces of moisture have to be removed. And that can be done only by using drying agents. And the drying agent that is used in this for hydrogen chloride is concentrated sulfuric acid. So there are drying agents that are preferred and there are drying agents that are not preferred. Okay, Here the drying agent used is concentrated sulfuric acid. Why do we use only concentrated sulfuric acid? Because it is acidic. So therefore, no reaction with HCl, which is also acidic. That's why. Now there are drying agents which are not used. Why wouldn't they be used? Because they react with hydrogen chloride gas. Example, there is 
calcium oxide that is not used. Why calcium oxide is not used? Because it reacts. Calcium oxide plus HCl would give you calcium chloride plus water. So, instead of getting this hydrogen chloride, it would totally be converted into two different products. The second that is not used is phosphorus pentoxide. Now, when phosphorus pentoxide is used, it reacts with hydrogen chloride to give phosphorus oxychloride sorry, and metaphosphoric acid. So, calcium oxide and phosphorus pentoxide are not used because they react with hydrogen chloride to form different products. Okay, so we can't use them to dry the gas. The next thing that we move on is the last part of the diagram as to how this is collected, the mode of collection. Okay, now as you see in the diagram, the there is no water here and it is collected over air. And how is it collected? Because hydrogen chloride gas is heavier than air, it is about 1.28 times heavier. So what would it do? The moment this HCl comes in, it would displace the air upward and it would take occupy the lower places. So how does it basically, how is it collected? By upward displacement of air. So this is how it is collected. Upward displacement of air. Okay. And why is it not collected over water? Because it is highly soluble in water. One volume of water can dissolve 452 volumes of HCl. So that is the solubility of HCl. So it is highly soluble in water. So we can't collect it over water, we can only collect it over air and by upward displacement of air. We need not remember the solubility quotient, but we need to know that hydrogen chloride is highly soluble in water, so it's not collected over water and it is collected by upward displacement of air. So this is about the laboratory preparation of hydrogen chloride gas.